Hi, good day. This is Paul Carpenter from Solace. Today I'm going to be talking about troubleshooting phase rotation for meters and export power manager. It applies to both external EPMs, internal EPMs, as well as meters, which, which get connected into storage inverters to, to do a lot of their jobs. It is extremely important that these phase rotation issues are troubleshooted and are correct, because if there aren't, you will be getting firstly inaccurate values for consumption monitoring, which is uh, a pretty big problem. And then obviously it will not be able to do its job correctly. If it's, if it's doing export power management, it will not be able to do that correctly. If it's doing self-use for hybrid and storage, inver storage inverters, it will not be able to do that correctly if there is a phase rotation issue. So we're going to be doing some playing with the CTs. The CT is a current device that just measures the current. It communicates that, that current measurement through to a meter and the meter is already measuring voltages and that's how it gets power. Voltage multiplied by current equals power. And the whole point of this video is phase rotation. So if you multiply phase one voltage by phase two current, you'll be getting an incorrect answer and the system will not be able to do its job correctly. So we're gonna be talking about how to fiddle a little trick that I can, that we're gonna go through about how to fiddle with these CTs to make sure that you've got your phase rotation in the right way. Um, please refer to my theory presentation on why this test and why the theory of an in-phase voltage and current will, will generally have a higher real power value than an out-of-phase voltage and current. So the, the thing that we're going to do here is put all three CTs on one phase and then we're going to look at the real power readings on the meter that we're testing, the, 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 the Eastron meter that we're testing here, and we're going to see which of those phase powers is the highest, and that's going to tell us which phase is the, which CT is the correct CT for that phase. And then we'll take the last remaining two, the lower real power values. So if, if phase one is the highest real power value, we'll take two and three CTs, because it's labeled, and we'll put it on the next cable. In this installation, I've got the um, the phase cables all correctly labeled, so it's very easy for me to know, but in a lot of these commercial sites, we wouldn't have these correctly labeled. And the maybe you made an error on the voltage um, plug going into the meter or EPM. And if you make that mistake, you've also got to make the same mistake on your CT alignment. So it's just got to be that voltage one equals volt is on voltage current one and voltage two is on current two and three and three. Okay, so we're going to be fiddling with these CTs to get this meter measuring correctly. Uh, currently it is measuring correctly because I can see these two meters are measuring the same. Uh, we've set up a, a hybrid inverter to force charge um, at a certain power. Um, so what's very important with this test is that we, we get real power flowing through these cables. Not real power flowing into the devices, but through these cables there needs to be current flow. Current needs to be flowing through each of these cables for this to happen. So on a commercial site, this could be quite difficult, but generally turning off the PV inverters, turning off the hybrid inverters, or turning off all the generators, and just leaving that commercial site to do its general consumption and, and power usage is enough to, to get this test working and, and give us the ability to calculate or work out which is the, phase, the correct phase rotation. So I'm going to remove all three CTs because I, I don't know, I mean, especially being on a commercial site, maybe I've got the luxury that I know that this inverter is charging at 6 kilowatts or 5 kilowatts or something like that. But on a commercial site, there, there's warehouses going on, they're, they're, they're using machinery all over the site. You won't necessarily know if that 1.5 kilowatt is accurate, the 2 kilowatts in phase 2 is accurate, etc. So what you've got to do is um, take all three CTs and put them on one of the cables. So I'm going to pick phase one just because it's the first number numerically, but you could also do this starting on phase two or three. But I've got all three CTs sitting on phase one. Eh. Not both cables, just phase one. Okay, 
And if we look at the meter now, you can see that the real power values for phase one is one and a half kilowatts. The real power value for phase two is 700 watts. And the real power value for three is um, 790 watts. Now that correlates beautifully with my theory uh, presentation is that it will be the opposite sign. So cosine 120 equals half, negative half. So it's, it's around about half of the real power value and it's, it's the opposite sign. But please note, I, it, it only works really nicely in this example because I'm using unity power factor. My, my inverter here is programmed to inject um, balanced power so or pull balanced power. But on your commercial sites, when you're doing this on a commercial application, it won't necessarily be real power only and this won't look so beautiful on your system. But that is telling me, so using that theory, the correct CT for that phase that I've got this, this cable, yes, it's, 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 it's brown in my system because we, we want to be as, as, as beautiful as possible. But in your site, it might be the incorrect color or have no color. So you just have no idea if this is phase one or two or three. So you'll have your CTs around it and you don't know which one of these CTs is the correct CT. And that's the whole point of this troubleshooting step is we now know that that CT labeled one, which is that short cable here. It's only a, it's a, it's a one meter, two meter cable. So I can work out that I only need to remove the other two CTs because those are the incorrect ones. That first CT is definitely the correct one. So now I'm gonna go take CT three, which is labeled three, and it's going into the pins for CT3 on the meter and put it, I'm going to put it on phase, phase three, just, be, just to be slightly different to show that it, 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 it won't be um, straight, but um, it, the, the, the same theory applies. So I'm going to put it on phase three and then I'm going to take CT2 because CT2 was the other low one, CT1 was the highest real power value. So that's why I'm not moving CT1. Okay, so I've moved CT2 and 3 to phase 3, cable 3, or this unknown cable. Let's pretend that this is unknown. And then I look on the meter again, and the highest value of real power is the correct phase. So we, we might have that hybrid inverter doing some, some slight changes here and it's changing its, its discharge power, which is still fine. But here you can clearly see that one of those real power values is significantly lower than the other, which, which if you followed that theory, it tells us that that is the correct phase. So CT3 is the correct CT for this phase, this cable that we've got here. If we, I know it's phase three, but if you don't know it's phase three, your CT that's labeled three or going into the pin three is the correct CT. So I can just remove CT2 and put it on the final cable. So we've only, we've only got three cables that we care about here. So we've got neutral and earth, yes, but that's, we're not putting CTs on, on neutral or earth. We're just putting CTs on the phase cables and we've got three CTs and three phase cables. And that's why I knew that that last remaining CT would go on phase two. So I did a little trick there. I, did it, I didn't do it in a numerical order. I did, I put all three CTs on phase one, which we might not know. Then I put the remaining two that were the lower values on this one, according to the meter, onto phase three. And then I looked at the meter, saw which was the, lo the lowest power value, the lowest real power value, removed only that CT and put it on the remaining phase cable. And now I've got it, I can be dead certain if, I'm, if the load is a, a majority real power load, you can be pretty certain that your CTs are the correct polarity and then I would, oh not polarity, phase rotation and then I would possibly go into a polarity test which, um, we, which is another troubleshooting step that we need to take. Thank you.